Welcome to our clinical skills presentation video. Our clinical skill was a slit lamp examination. This video was created by Daniel, Gareth, Steve, Punam, Jack and Miranda. Patient history. Here we have the patient history for Mr. I. Payne. He's a 21 year old male who's presented complaining of a foreign body sensation in his left eye. His general health is good. He has nil past ocular history. He has no allergies. He's not taking any medications. What's interesting to note, however, is that in his family history, his mother has glaucoma and his father has cataracts. Throughout the examination, we'll explore this information a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to my refractive error. So I've got a plus two on the left and a plus 1.5 in the right. Then I'm going to set it to my IPD. And then I'm going to set it to the correct magnification here, which is 10. Okay, so the first view we're going to do is the diffuse beam. So it's straight on to the patient's eye, and we're going to set the beam to a wide. And then the second view is the parallel pipe, which is at a 45 degree angle. And the slit beam is very thin. So this dial here is how you change the filters for different examinations. And this dial here is to change the slit length. This is the thin beam that we use for parallel piped views. And this is the wide beam that we use for diffuse views. Could you to come in front here? Rest your chin and touch your forehead for me. It's good. It's nice and fun. Keep it fun. You may feel a bit of a light uh, in your eyes. Tell me when you're uncomfortable. It's good. Here we see the orthoptist performing a basic anterior examination. She instructs the patient on where to look in order for her to see the ocular features more clearly. She lightly pulls down upon the lower lid in order to see the lid margins. Likewise, she will do the same with the upper lid, checking for signs of blepharitis or for any foreign bodies. Also checking the margins for signs of infection, such as chalasia or styes. I'm going to avert your lids to check any signs of foreign body over there. So I want you to look down towards me, yeah, towards the ground. Yeah, that's good. Stay on there. Stay. Keep looking down for me. That's good. Keep looking down. That's nice. Keep 
The orthoptist here is using the parallel piped beam to perform the Van Herrick grading of the patient's anterior chamber depth. The gap between the light focused on the cornea and the light focused on the iris is used to grade the anterior chamber depth. The orthoptist has decided to grade Mr. I. Payne's anterior chamber depth as a number 4 on the Van Herrick scale. Um, when preparing a patient for a posterior examination, we have the light set up to 0 degrees, we have the light beam thin and tall and bright, and we hold the scene lens in between the light and the patient, resting our fingers on the forehead rest. The image that we get of the retina will be inverted and flipped, and to get the retina in focus we need to adjust the light in terms of distance from the patient and the lens as well. At the end of the full examination, the orthoptist has discovered Mr. I. Payne has 6'6 six, six uncorrected in both eyes. His left lid showed signs of a small amount of blepharitis. His cornea was clear. His anterior chamber was graded to 4, meaning the anterior chamber was quite deep. His pupils were equal and reactive to light and accommodation. His lens showed no opacities. His left eye was slightly flushed. Later, a tear breakup time test was performed and it was found to be 3 seconds, quite under the average. Due to this T-butt time, we attribute the left flush of the sclera due to dry eyes. Mr. Eye Pain's cup to disc ratio was 4, and there were no signs of retinal nerve fibre layer damage. The orthoptist came to the conclusion that the foreign body sensation was due to the dry eye. She sent him home with lubricating drops and reminded him to come back for his two-year glaucoma review.